G'day guys and welcome back to me lab. In this video, our 10th installment in our Super Bogan Brothers Godot 4 platformer tutorial, we are going to make it so our little Bogan dude has three lives and when those three lives are expended, you are dead. So let's have a look at our WWSS and then get into our coding. Let's start off by just refreshing where we got up to in our last game. So jump into your Godot whilst I'm doing this. So we can jump, we can get our coins. Our coins are added to our GUI. We've got toads that stay on their platform, toads that fall into pits. We can fall into pits and die. Let's uh, try and get to our flag from our last one. And we should be able to touch the flag and that then takes us to the next level. Yes. And we haven't really done anything here. So one thing we still need to do in our second level is we never added our GUI. And we'll do that before we finish today as well. All right, let's close that down. Now, what we're going to be doing, it's all going to be script based today. So get into your script view and then grab your global.gd. That's the first thing we're going to edit. And it's going to be super, super simple. We're just adding a new variable. I'll try and use lowercase instead. And we're going to call it um, player lives. Oops. And that's going to be equal to three, right? Makes sense. Um, and that's that's all we're doing in that particular script. So we've done that. We've added this player lives three. Let's go to our player script now, because that's where we're going to be messing around. And in particular, what we're going to be messing around with is our die function. All right. So at the moment, what we do is we're saying if our player is already dying, then you don't need to do anything else. Then we're coming down here and going, all right, but if not, set is dying to true play our die animation and then wait for that little function we made here to finish playing that Mario going uh, up and down you wait for that to finish and then start the scene again that now needs to change right because we've now got three lives so we're going to change our logic in here to make sure that we don't just always start the scene again but rather we change the number of lives we have and when we get to uh, zero lives we don't start the scene again so let's have a look at how we'll do that so I think after our await is where we'll do our first little um, bit of messing around. So remember, we just made a global variable called player lives, and we're going to access that here. So we want to take one away whenever our player dies. That's what we're saying here. So global player lives, we want to subtract one from whatever the current total is every time we die. That's what that one line is doing there. But that is not all. So we're now going to check and see how many lives we have left. So let's jump down here and go if global.player player lives uh, is greater than zero, right? So if we haven't run out of lives yet, we just want to, I'm just going to put in a debug statement here, reloading scene, just to make sure we can track if that's working or not, right? And then we can run this one here, but it needs to be over there a bit more. Now, that's not everything though, right? We're just saying if we've got more than zero lives, reload the scene. If we don't have more than zero lives though, else otherwise, we're going to Q3. Now you might remember that Q3 is what is it's how we sort of delete something from the game. We aren't going to leave it there. Like in our next lesson, we're going to do something extra. I might just put this in here. So we're going to, in our next lesson, create a couple of um, start and end screens, right? And I'm just going to put in a way of actually accessing that here. I'm just going to check on my file paths. So I've not actually made this yet, right? So, oops. This is what we're going to do, though, in our next lesson. We're going to use that line. So at the moment, we're just going to queue free. But in our next lesson, if we run out of lives, we're going to play a game over scene. So I'm just going to leave that in there so you know where we're sort of heading to, if that makes sense. All right, I reckon we're almost there. Let's save what we've done here. Um, We'll go in and test it, and then we'll play around with um, getting that added to our GUI and stuff. So let's test and make sure. So at the moment, um, we can count our coins still. We can die once. Should respawn in our normal spot. Die twice. Respawn. And die thrice. So now we shouldn't respawn. It should just stay like, yep, there we go. You queued free. So the reason the camera changed is because we removed the player from the camera, uh, which has the camera attached to it, right? So when the player was queued free, 
the view change. So don't worry about that. That's not actually how we're gonna manage it normally. It's just for today, but that's good. We can see that what we've done works. Now we wanna actually be able to visibly track how many lives we have, because I don't expect everyone to have a perfect memory. I certainly don't, as is evidenced by all the mistakes I make in these tutorials. All right, so how are we gonna do that? If you recall, I said we we're also gonna fix up our GUI a little bit, but let's go to our coin GUI scene up the top there. As um, So we've got it on this side here in our um, scene list, and then we also want it on our scripts too. So at the moment, this is what we've got. Extends canvas layer, and in our process function, we're gonna do something to that label, which is our coin label, which is display the word coins, and then whatever that global total is. This is almost exactly what we're gonna do for our lives, okay? So we wanna click on our coin GUI root node, click on the plus, and look for a label. We're gonna add a new label. We're gonna call it label two, that's fine. Um, and then we're gonna put in a bit of code that is almost exactly the same as what we've already got here. So let's just go down to our next line. This is gonna become label two, right? Because that's what it is over here, label two. Instead of coins, we want it to sort of talk about our lives. And then instead of total coins, we want to show global player lives. So just have a think about how this works, right? So we've got our um, canvas layer, so we're extending from that. That's our root node, right? So that one called coin GUI is a canvas layer. That's why we extend it. Then in our process function, which is the one that updates every frame, we just wanna make sure that the label, the first label is showing whatever the current amount of coins are. So this is updating every frame, remember? Um, and the same with our lives. So that should mean that every single frame, we have got a very uh, current and relevant readout. So let's just have a look in our 2D view. Um, I think we can probably just move this one down a bit. Actually, do we have our, so that's to five. Where's our first one? There. What I might do is move that, uh, this one out and down a bit as well just to create a bit of space, there we go. All right, we'll see how that looks in the game. Save that, press play. All right, coins and lives, both displayed. Coin still adds up. Uh, bounced a long way then. Um, let's see if our player lives still work. There we go, I died. We respawn and I've only got two lives. Now, let's see what happens if we die three times. Twice, it goes down to one, I hope. There we go, thrice. He's dead, what's gonna happen? We should queue free. There we go. Excellent, excellent, excellent. That is all working. Now, there is one final thing that we need to do, and that is get our GUI into our second world. And this is really easy, and I've left this for today because I wanted to do those lives and stuff, right? So let's click on our underworld, which is where we made our second world. There it is there. Now, all we have to do is drag our newly updated coin GUI scene into this one, right? So we find our coin GUI dot scene, and we're just gonna drag it up and drop it on our underworld there. Um, and then it's added to our game. So now let's test it. Let's see, actually, just to make my life easier because I'm so bad at playing my own game. Let's just um, put my player over here a bit further so we can speed this up. All right, let's play that. Hopefully when we get to our underworld, we also have our GUI. So there we go, coins and lives are up there. There we go, coins and lives are up there. Let's make sure it still updates in this one. Oh, hang on, I can't, because I never added the pit. So I can't die in this particular level, but I'm sure you can. Che check yours and make sure it still works. That's it, so let's have a look at our must may might. We're getting very close to the end of the main lessons. After maybe the next one, we're going to start just doing um, just short little ideas that can improve your game. But let's have a look at our must may might, and then we'll um, go through all that other stuff. Thank you very much.